Exposure is here and it's coming. We've only seen the tip of the iceberg and what happens next is shocking. Now I prophesied many years ago that the great falling away was underway and now it's accelerated. You know, during my time as an editor of Charisma Magazine, I saw pastors, worship leaders, and other people fall into gross sin, but there's something different about what's happening now and what's about to happen. There's something different. Exposure is coming at a mass scale, at a scale that we may not have ever seen it in our lifetime. And think about this, for every recognizable fall, there are many others who fall in silence. In other words, they may not have large platforms, they may not have great influence, but make no mistake, God has made it clear that he will not tolerate the mixture. You know, Cindy Jacobs recently prophesied, and I'm sure many of you have heard that word, uh, but I wanna read you just a little tiny bit of it, and I want you to listen really closely before we get into the meat of our broadcast, I'm gonna bring in my good friend, Scott Neri here in just a minute to help me to navigate this topic. Here's what Cindy wrote. Judgment has begun at the house of God and will increase. And there may appear to be a severity in the cleansing of the church. There will be no wiggle room for those who think that no one sees. This judgment is to clean the house in order to give the church the authority and prayer to avert what's coming. For the covers are coming off sin. And the Lord says there is a, those in the prayer movement are going first because some of them stood in my face, says the Lord, and brought uncleanness and mixture before the throne. This will not be tolerated, says the Lord. It's time to confess before you're exposed and cry out to me as, as, uh, to help you then as you navigate through the consequences. And the Lord says, for those who truly love me more than hiding your sin, I will help you, even though it will be difficult. You can choose to go the hard way or the way of holiness and repentance. For I am a jealous, I am jealous for revival, says the Lord, and the raising up of reformers for your nations. The hearts of many of those who are in this new move of God must not be crushed and darkened by the sin of the church. I am the refiner's fire, says the Lord. I am holiness personified. Cry out to be holy and washed clean. Holiness belongs to me, says Lord. I will not tolerate mixture, even though it looks it's like, like I haven't seen some of the sin in the church. I know all things, and I'm going to reveal a side of me that many have not seen in their lifetime. Mm -hmm. Listen, this put the fear of the Lord in me, and I don't have any known sin, any hidden sin. I mean, we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, but I'm not in immorality, idolatry, covetousness, and I examined my heart. And so today we're going to look at this topic of the exposure that's here and coming. And today I have my dear friend, Scott Neri, uh, with me. Praise God. He is with me there. He's from 420 Fire. This is an evangelism movement. He's got planting churches, planting hubs, seeking transforming revival in America, one family, one community, and one city at a time. And he's burning up things all over the country. I'm Jennifer LeClaire, the former editor of Charisma Magazine, founder of Awakening Prayer Hubs. And before we start today, please like, share, and follow. And Scott, why don't you say hello to everybody out there? Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. It's, it's great to be here. Jennifer, it's always great to connect with you. I absolutely love uh, what God has doing with and through you. And uh, when you find like-minded people, those are the people that you run the race with. And so I'm really excited to be here and share uh, a perspective of what, what the Lord is saying and what's happening right now in the body of Christ. So uh, just welcome everybody. Glad you are here. Thanks for liking and sharing on this to everyone. Yeah, thanks, Scott. It's always good to connect with you. Look forward to doing this more. Listen, I want to share with all of you out there, and I'm going to kick it over to Scott, a scripture that the Lord took me to just yesterday. Ask the Lord. I always ask the Lord, what do you want me to read? And he said, read Proverbs 10. I said, okay. So I read Proverbs 10, verse 19 in the Amplified Bible says this, he who walks in integrity and with moral character walks securely. But he who takes a crooked way will be discovered and punished. I mean, that's intense. 
We might think we're hiding, but we're not hiding from God. Now, Scott, I know you and your wife and many people in your ministry. You're you're a righteous man. You're a holy man. You're not a perfect man, but you're a holy man. You're hard after God. You follow the Lord. You just it uprooted your ministry by the word of the Lord from Kannapolis to West Virginia. You got to be following the Lord to do some major move like that. But, you know, this scripture and this stuff that we're seeing, I mean, does that not put the fear of the Lord in you too? I mean, is it just me? Because, I mean, I'm like, whoa. Yeah, oh, absolutely. It's the fear of the Lord. But, you know, that's not, we know that without a getting of wisdom. And the thing is, the word says that he's coming by and by for a glorious church without a spot or ring. And without holiness, no one can see the Lord. And one of the things I'm learning about, about what holiness is, holiness is not about perfection, but about connection. And when someone has a true heart connection with God, you're going to do those things that please God. And again, Luke 12, 48 says, to whom much is given, much is required. So what the Lord is is, is doing, his eyes are going back and forth throughout the entire world. Well, like the Bible, 16, verse 9. And he's looking for someone to show himself strong. But as he's looking, what's taking place, he's examining. He's, he's bringing what we know is, like Cindy prophesied, judgment begins at the house of God. So that's when the Lord's eyes were examining, is there, is there, is there, is there someone that you actually are worshiping something other than the Lord? And what he is doing, he's bringing us to a place of he's calling us up higher. And yes, the fear of the Lord is present, which that is actually the beginning of this. So it means that God is bringing us to a place of knowing him and he's inviting us. And if we walk this this life, as especially as leaders and ministers and teachers of the gospel, who the Bible clearly tells us in the book of James, let not there be many teachers or masters because they will receive greater judgment. That always was the fear of the Lord in me anyway. And so you can't live a life following God if you can't take ground for the Lord if the enemy still has ground in you. And if the enemy has ground in you, that's a place that the Lord is, is you haven't made Jesus Christ Christ's king. And that's where I'm saying, Lord, search my heart. Because I know as the days get darker, the light will shine brighter. But as the light shines brighter, the Lord will expose us. And he exposes things because he's calling us to a place where you get closer to me. Come boldly to the throne of grace. Confess your fears towards one another so you can be healed. And that's, again, he's calling us up higher. How can we make a difference in the world if we're not different from the world? And that's what he, I'm, I believe that the Lord is really clarifying and doing the right thing now. Wow. Yep. That's a good word. That is the word of the Lord. Jesus. My Lord, there I am. Listen, I want to, that, that's the word of the Lord, you know, but I, I need to ask you this question because this seems so clear to me. It seems so clear to you. And yet we've just seen a major scandal in the prayer movement. I believe the prophetic movement is next. The Lord gave me a word at the beginning of the year. And he said that the enemy was trying to burn down the gates. And I didn't really know what he meant fully at the time, but then a couple days ago, the Lord showed me, I think I was on a broadcast, a private meeting with some of the prophetic elders, and the Lord showed me, if the enemy can burn down the prayer movement or compromise the prayer movement, he can wiggle right into the prophetic movement. Because the prayer movement, the, the, the intercessors are gatekeepers. And when the gatekeepers are hurt, they're wounded, you know, they're exposed. Uh, they are they are troubled. They are they are walking away from the Lord. Some of them now that's hurting the intercessory prayer coverage that the prophets need. Prophets need prayer, you know. Yes. And 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 so I I see this is happening, and I'm very concerned about it as a prayer movement leader. But I look back to this issue in uh, Numbers 32, 22, and Moses said, and he was talking about the tribes that you know didn't go over with Israel. They got to come back and fight. But he said he said your sin will find you out. And that's the principle, your sin, your unrepented sin, your justified sin will find you. And if you repent, it's under the blood. If you've been restored, it's dealt with. Not everything needs to be massively exposed at a large scale. But if you seek the Lord and repent and find help, it won't be. That's what Cindy's word said. Repent now before the exposure comes. I mean, he's giving us a chance to repent. 
So your sin will catch up to you. Then, then we see this similar issue with Isaiah 59 verse 12 says that our sins testify against us. So we've seen this to be true. We remember when did Jimmy Swaggart fell, when Jim Baker fell. We've seen, you know, different ones. I'm not going to go down the list. Fall, certain pastors die of cocaine overdoses in hotels in New York City. We've seen all this. As editor of Charisma, I covered all this. So here's my question to you, Scott, because I'm sure a lot of people have the same question. Do we just not believe it? Or is, you know... Scripture is so clear about exposure. Scripture is so clear about judgment beginning in the house of God. You know, do we just not believe that? Or why do we keep seeing these these major ministers fall? I mean, do they not believe it? What is it? Are they deceived? What's going on here? Right. Well, I, I believe what's really happening. You know, again, he's coming by for a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. And even the Lord said in Luke 18, verse 8, the son of man returns, we really find faith. So that shows you there is going to be not everybody that says Jesus is, is Lord is making Jesus Lord. So what is happening? He's cleaning and clarifying. The Lord explained to me, he says, Scott, there's two types of people in today's church. I said, what is that, Lord? He says, well, you know, in, in Matthew chapter seven, there's this group that says, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not cast out devils in your name? Have we not healed the sick in your name? Have we not performed wonders in your name? And the Lord looked at him and says, depart from me, for I never knew you. Well, well, they're doing it in the name of the Lord. And they're probably have amazing, a big follow. But they're, they're more than concerned with, with the glitter and the glamour. And the Lord says, I, I, I never even knew you. You practice lawlessness. Now, he says that those who practice lawlessness, lawlessness really is lacking fathers and mothers. Wherever you lack fathers and mothers, you get into lawlessness because you're not accounting. And then there's another group of people that the Lord said in Matthew 25, that these people came up to him and he heard the Lord says, when you were naked, you clothed me. When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was in prison, you visited me. And they looked at him and says, when did we do this to you? He says, when you've done this to the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. And the Lord started to speak to me. And he says, those two types of groups in the, the last days in church, one group is full of litter. The other group is full of ministry and as servants. And so what's happening that's why the Lord is putting the spotlight because he's, he's exposing what's the omnidentic, what's the pure. And I believe that it's going to, he's giving people time to repent. And that's why you see these births of exposure, a little bit here, a little bit there. But now we're starting to see it ramming up. It's starting to magnify. And as it magnifies, that means as things get darker, as things start to unravel, that means we're getting closer to the return of the Lord. And if we're going to, again, make a difference in the world, but we have to be different different from the world. And so I believe that's one of the reasons why we're seeing it happen. And into the magnitude it is, is because the, the Lord is giving time to repent. And he's also inviting the, the body of Christ to look for more character than the charisma. When you see character and know the root of character, not the fruit of gifting, not the fruit of character, that's what is revealing the real sons of God in these days. And the Lord's going to bring some bogus on the show. Bad. That is so good. And that just reminded me of something the Lord showed me or a firm conviction that, that he placed on my heart. <laughs> he's, he's trying to clean up the church before the return of Christ. He, he's, right. he's, he's dropping the plumb line. He's saying, all right, you know, this great falling away, it, it's under it's underway to some degree, but it's going to get more evident. You know, it's going to happen. People are going to be picked off left and right. And he's allowing this shaking. He's allowing this, or he's bringing to, to, to the forefront this exposure, hoping that people will wake up and say, hey, I don't want to be next. Let me get myself together. And unfortunately, I believe we're going to see more exposures here in the next weeks or months. I think it's going to be tick, 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 uh, a few here at a time. And I hope that that's enough because the great awakening that you and I are believing for, it looks as if 
there is going to be a rude awakening before there's a great awakening. And it's it's really heartbreaking that we have to endure this because what happens is people are getting hurt. People are disillusioned. People's faith has been harmed. And really, you know, I have to say this. We have to be very careful that we don't put our faith in a person over Jesus. But you know what? When you've grown up under a ministry, when when a minister, a prophet, a, 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 a pastor has raised you up and, and taught you so much and been so kind to you, it does hurt. So it does hurt. And so, you know, but God is merciful and God is gracious. If any of you out there, you've, you've been under a ministry that's, you know, been exposed and, and you know, you've been hurt. My heart goes out to you and we're, we are praying for you. But there's there's going to be more. But I want to read this next scripture. We got a lot of scripture today because I think we need the word of the Lord in times like this. But Ephesians 5.11 says, take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness. So first of all, that's a command to take no part in it. Don't get into these dark works. Don't get into this secret sin. It's, it's not fruitful. The wages of sin is death. But scripture says, instead, expose them. Now, what we're seeing right now, which grieves my heart, is a... A propensity for these quote unquote heresy hunters and people with different theological perspectives exposing people and there's nothing to expose. I mean, I've seen Billy Graham and, you know, Joyce Meyer and people who are really doing great work for the Lord on lists with false prophets, you know, that's, that's, that's not good. And that's distracting people from the, the true exposure that the Lord is doing. I don't want anybody out there to get confused and start following these heresy hunters who want to call out anybody and everybody because they don't believe that women should preach or they don't believe in praying in tongues. or They don't believe in healing for today. That's not what we're talking about. That's not, the Lord exposing. That's man exposing in a wrong spirit, in a critical spirit. And even now, and some of you have seen this, and, and I'm not trying to throw shade at anybody, but it's very grievous where we have in the church world, these rival ministries, and this one's mad at this one, and this one's biting this one, and this one's devouring this one, and this one got a word of the Lord to expose this one, and this one's commenting on the post, and this one's commenting back. This is childish, it's foolishness. You know, that's not what we're talking about. That is not what we're talking about. But, but, you know, at the same token, now we have the conundrum because you see it in, in, uh, in Moses's life, how he got drunk. He got wasted. He was naked in his tent. I mean, you know, the vineyard was the, and his, one of his sons saw him naked and went and told the other sons. And we see what happened. The two sons took a garment, backed up backwards into the tent to cover his shame. And, the, and when Moses woke up, the son that exposed him was cursed. And the sons that covered him were blessed. So now some people get very confused, Scott, about this because they think, well, I can't expose a leader. I can't do this. I can't do that. I don't want to be cursed. Touch not God's anointed. So there's a time to expose and there's a time to cover. So you, can you talk a little bit about, you know, when do we cover and when do we expose? Yeah, that's 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 a great question because that's something that many of us have not haven't understood because you can bring correction unless you love. You know, God corrects those he loves, and so when the Lord it brings the exposure, what takes place? The exposure usually happens because the person is choosing not to be penitent. They're not repenting. And when you expose, or some God uses exposure, number one, the person or the people that God uses to expose should be grieving. It should not be celebrated. Exposure should hurt you and wound your heart because what it's doing, it's, it's, it's the thing is, if, if God has used us to, to bring exposure and and it, it was absolutely, uh, it was in his heart. The fear of the Lord was on me. I trembled. I, we had to even publicly mark someone who caused division in, in the ministry. And it, it was just so hard, but it was the Lord. And so the time to do it is, again, you first would go to the person, obviously, and you, you bring them the, and explain what's going on, and you give them an opportunity to repent say two more witnesses, if they're not repenting, then the exposure happens. Even like we saw how, how it talks about it in the Bible. But then there is some place of restoration or, or, or the word of And we know that, you know, Galatians was 6, 1, when we heard that, because I heard it, I heard it so many times. I was, I was in, I was, I was Hindi in Jimmy's in my 
college, college. With, with, when, when everything happened. Yeah. And so I was there in the midst, of it. and it actually happened yeah. twice. There was two instances, and there was a lot of people that walked away from the Lord. They're not serving the Lord today, and that's and terrible. It, but it, you know, if we get to the place of uh, doing Galatians 6.1, it says, Brethren, if anyone is caught in a trespass or sin, those who are still spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of meekness, considering yourself lest you be And that's the thing that I've always said, Lord, when exposure happens, I pray that the heart of God would be on every person, but by the Lord will jail us. He, he he does us one one mixture, and even when God corrects, his his correction is is not right. That's one of the beauties of the Lord. He will correct, and it's even desire. And I believe that as far as the way that God orchestrates the, the exposure, He gives those people time to repent, and then what happens? Is, they're not, not repenting, and repenting isn't saying, I'm sorry. Repenting is changing. It's turning around. And then what happens is those people go to their, there's the people that are accountable to them, especially they will go to them and bring correction. If they don't take it, then exposure will take place. And if it's a public ministry and they're not repenting, they will be exposed. That's, that's my night. Well, now I'm probably using it as that. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, you know, David, think of David, King David, you know, he, there were people who knew that he had uh, Bathsheba's husband, Uriah, murdered. Uh, right. uh, Joab knew. We don't know who else might have known, but this wasn't, you know, really done secretly. He called for Bathsheba from beside the river where she was bathing. He had his servants call her to him. They are not, you know, they know what's going on behind the closed door. So they knew that he was in sin. A lot, and I'm sure that a lot of people knew he was in sin. And what did God do? Well, he waited for David to repent, right? Even, even, the, even the, you know, he waited. I, I don't know how long it was, but the baby was born and, you know, the baby was still young. So maybe a year, right, that God gave David to repent and he didn't. So what happened next? God went to him privately through Nathan. So we want to always be able to try to contain these things. Or, you know, it doesn't do anybody any good to expose something at a broad scale if it, if it can be handled privately right. and, and that's the hardest to do because it because it damages the people who are following that ministry it hurts those people so but i want to say this and this is really important because when we get in these seasons of exposure what tends to happen is you know people say well i had a dream about my pastor and he or she was in sexual immorality. And they can truly believe that the Lord gave them that dream when that dream may not have come from the Lord. We cannot ever, 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 ever make accusations based on a dream alone. Even if the dream is accurate, many of you out there need to hear me. Even if the dream is accurate, is 100%, and you've got five people sharing the same dream. You still need some physical evidence. Those dreams should lead you then to pray for exposure. We had an incident in our church uh, last quarter of 2023, and there was this one particular woman. She'd been with us for a long time, and she had come against me once before, repented, and um, you know we restored her. It was a difficult time. There was a lot of shaking in the ministry. A lot of people, my father died, and different, different people were passing away. So we were all distracted. This woman entrenched herself. Well, it came to the point where God was trying to bring her to repentance. People started having dreams about her. People started having visions about her. The Lord started speaking to people about her. And these people came to us privately as a leadership team and said, wow, we hate to tell you this. Rebuke us if we're wrong. We don't know what to do, but we keep having these dreams. And, we have a and these were independently. These people weren't talking to each other. These people weren't even close friends in the church. They were individually coming to us. And I said, wow. I said, this is really, really bad. And so what do you do then? I can't go to the person and say, well, you know, five people have had dreams, visions, prophetic words that you are a Jezebel. You know what? I can't do that. What do you do? You begin to pray and ask God, Lord, bring this person to repentance or expose the evidence. Because if, yes. if someone is hurting other people, then that's hurting the heart of God. And the longer you allow that person to continue in that state, the more damage they're going to do. So it's mercy at that point. 
when when God begins to reveal this, there's so many, it's mercy that it be exposed. I know it doesn't feel that way, but here, listen, it's even mercy to the one who is exposed because that yes. might be the only way they repent. And God doesn't want them to die in this sinful. Now that we could debate whether, you know, if you die in sin, you used to, I believe that you're saved by faith you know, through grace by faith. However, there does come a point when if we don't stop the sin, we can be given over to a retro, a reprobate mind and our conscience yes. can get seared with a hot iron and then we're candidates for the great falling away. So, so sometimes God will expose things before the person gets so far down the road that they just, walk away from Christ because we've seen worship leaders walk away from Christ, become atheists. So I, I had to say that because some of you listening, you're prophetic. We have a prophetic audience and people are going to begin to, to learn things, see things, have visions, dreams. You have to then pray over the dream. You can't go on social media. There was a young man, you know him, I won't say his name. And he had this dream one time and said, oh, I had a dream. And the dream was if Mike Bickle and Dutch Sheets, so this person probably knows who he is, going to get mad at me, but I'm not exposing you, brother. Uh, if Dutch Sheets and Mike Bickle don't, don't come, I saw them bowing to each other and forgiving one another and repenting. And if they don't do this, we're never going to see a great awakening. Well, that dream was not from the Lord, you know, and I happen to know, you know, both those men at the time, they didn't have any beef with each other. So this was not so big. You can't just go by your dreams. Your enemy can use you to, to, to bring harm to someone's ministry through your dream. So anyway, Scott, did you want to add anything to that? No, I said like a lot of times people are more led by their dreams because again, you have to be led by the spirit of the Lord. And even if your dream is showing something, again, just like the exposed, I've had many memories of these prophetic dreams about certain leaders in the body of Christ. And I'm not going on social media and starting to blast that, you know, because of the thing is, it's like this. The Bible tells us in the book of James to be quickly here and slow to speak. And that means that we're always called to wait on the Lord so our words carry your weight. And so even if the dream comes, we have to stay low. We have to wait and say, all right, Lord, number one, let's pray. Let's pray and see, see what, what it is. Why, what is the reason you gave me this dream? And I think the number one reason he gives us dreams is to seek and to knock and to ask. It's, dreams are like invitations from the Lord to get closer to him. And so if, if people are, are led by the, just a dream, they make sure that it's done decently in an order and you don't get into accusation to a dream at all. That's, that's one thing you don't know. And so you never even receive accusation. So I accept by two more witnesses and it has to be obviously proof, you know, now. Yeah. Yeah. There has to be proof. One more, one more big question, then a small one. Um, you know, I was reading in Proverbs, I asked the Lord this morning, what do you want me to read? And he said, I want you to re read Proverbs next month. We're coming into the month of June. I want you to read Proverbs like a devotional because you're going to need a lot of wisdom in the days ahead. And I said, okay, well, let me just start now. This is the 28th day at the time of this recording. And I read Proverbs 28. And I'm looking for what the Lord's, you know, what the rhema word of the Lord is going to jump out at me. And of course, re re Proverbs 28 verse 13 says, he who covers his sins will not prosper, but whoever <laughs> confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. God is merciful. But it seems like some people, they just get away with sin for decades. I mean, that was the case with IHOP. Casey, this stuff was going on for a long time. This wasn't once or twice. This stuff was hidden for years. So what are we supposed to do with a scripture like this? Because some people will take this literally and say, well, if you're in sin, you can't prosper. But yet we see these ministries you know, repeatedly that they, they blew up they, in a good way. They grew. Many people were blessed. Many people were healed. Many people were saved. Many people, mm -hmm. you know, were equipped. Many people were launched out into ministry. That's prosperity. So what do we do with the scripture like this, you know, that says, well, you can't prosper if you cover your sin, but they're prospering. I think that might be giving some people who don't really understand how merciful the Lord is. I'm concerned that might be giving some people a license to just say, ah, you know, that, that scripture doesn't apply, it's Old Testament, but it is the word of God. So so what do we do with that? Right. Well, what is true prosperity? True prosperity isn't is it what you have, it's the who you have. And a lot of these people that are being exposed, they don't really have the who's in their life. What I mean by that is they're not really truly in accountability. And, and God opposes the proud and he gives grace to the hungry. And so you'll see 
I think sometimes people think, well, you, know, I, you got all of this, this ministry is growing. You got all these people here. So that means you're doing something right. No, you know, that doesn't mean anything because this is, what makes a mega church isn't the amount of people, but it's the amount of presence. And God is so faithful. He is so kind and he's so good and he is long suffering. So even in these major ministries that have been in secret sin for years, he's still looking at that people. He's still going to search their heart. He's still going to answer them. And that's that's the thing that I just it makes me fall in love with the more the Lord more every day because it's like, God, you're you're so good. And you're so kind, but yet he does long suffer. But there is a day, there's a day of reckoning. And that's, I think it's one of the things that's happening is, again, just like I just said earlier, he owes us the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. And what is the proud? Proud is those who say that I have no problem. I don't need to change what I'm doing. I am okay. I'll never be in the And they just get trapped up. I call it the matrix of the machine. They just keep going because it's it's become a machine and popularity. Uh, money's coming in. Fame is coming in. You're getting well-known. And it, But again, it's better to be well-known by the Lord than to be well-known by man. And the one thing that the Lord was telling me earlier, and I'll share this with you, and even I'm like, I can, you can... To get, take it, take it, and see what you say. Yeah. But, but in Philippians chapter two, verse seven, Paul talks about. He says, he said, "This must be the end." He says, "Jesus made himself of no reputation, and he stripped to himself." And I'm not giving myself so any place let us make ourselves of our reputation. And our reputation is we're not emptying ourselves. Is a place of a danger. This is door for the enemy to come in and. and Utilize his ways because he will try and find wisdom with the accusation to us all at high times. And then when you see people in the body of Christ and go into this whole, they, they, they feel like they can't be exposed because they're doing this for years and yet they're prosperous. You know, to this, this prosperity is not the why, it's the who. And it's my prayer that. Uh, some of these well-known people would have true people that they can can can, can they can be accountable to, and they would call them. I witnessed it firsthand, and with with Jimmy Swagger, I witnessed it firsthand. David Wilkerson came to the to the school and stood up on the platform and called him out. And I'm like, oh my God, not us. And it and he he was with all the get off the stage. It was the craziest thing, but the fear of the Lord was was oh present. But what, what what's happening? This this um, awakening. The, the awakening happens first with the root awakening, and you're seeing the true clarity and in 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 God's cleansing things. And, and you're going to see people walk with more integrity, more character, and they're not concerned with being known by man, but being known by the Lord. And by that, you walk in purity that truly truly shows that. that you are a church so that has an ab spot on the ball. And that's just my thought for that. Yeah, that's really, really good. I agree. You know, it's, <laughs> I have had the pleasure of in the last year in particular to fellowship and get to know people who have done mighty great work. And, and nobody in the American church would have probably heard their name. And yet they're making a bigger impact than, you know, a lot of the people that do have a big name. And so it's not about your name. It's about his name. Amen. The name above all names. It's us decreasing that he might increase. And I just, I, I we're, we're, you know, Scott and I are praying. And I'm going to ask Scott to pray it here in just a minute. But what I want you guys to do, if you have questions about this topic, I'd like to do a follow-up and leave your questions down below so that we can thoughtfully and prayerfully help some of you who really are hurt, you're suffering. Maybe you're aware that there's sin in your leader's life and you don't know what to do. We'd like to be able to address, because this is really a critical moment. This is a really a history-making moment in the body of Christ. It really, really is. We're going to see some more exposures. They're coming and they're coming soon. And for all the big you know, exposures, there, there's other smaller 
you know, churches whose pastors are also in sexual sin. They're also being exposed. You don't have to have a, a big platform to, to, to hurt people. It's all relative. And I just, in this season of exposure, we want to navigate this with humility. We want to navigate this with prayer. And, you know, we are not above anybody or better than, you know, we are searching our hearts. And though Scott and I had a long talk before we started this broadcast and just, we do this, we're, we're both working out our own salvation with fear and trembling. We are not the judge, but if we can be of service to the body at a time like this, be a, a voice of hope, a voice of uh, reconciliation, a voice of healing, we want to do that. So I, I'd like to do a follow up and maybe talk about how we heal, especially, you know, because you had that situation there with Swaggart. I've been involved in some things where, you know, a leader fell, wasn't public, but he fell. And you know, it, it's it's painful. And I think that there is a, a, a Christ-centered way to navigate the pain and and not become bitter or jaded or walk away from Jesus, because that is the enemy's idea. He wants people to turn away from Christ and 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 God it just wants to hold you and love you and 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 heal you. So we're going to be back and do another one but but Scott any final words and then would you pray for the people who are listening? Absolutely. You know one thing I want to tell each and every one of you when a man or woman fails you know, just know this that Jesus did it. That's that flesh. flesh. But the Lord has us held you. And so when you when you get wounded and hurt by someone else the Lord sees your heart. He sees your wound, and he wants to the, the bind of that wound. And he wants to bring redemption to a wound. He wants to bring restoration to your heart, and he wants to restore even those who may have failed and are clearly penitent, and they're ready to give their lives fully to Christ. But I want to bless you all and pray for you. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, that you are a God that heals, that you are not shocked up. You are not surprised by anything and everything because you've seen the end before the beginning. So you know everything that would happen. So I pray, Lord, Lord that for each and every viewer, Lord, that you would just bring continual healness, healing to their heart, heart and wholeness to their mother body. Lord, that they would continue to see the person of Jesus. And Lord, Lord, bring your redemption out of all of this. And even all those who fail. Lord, we pray that they would have a restoration to their heart, restoration to their mind, and restoration to their relationship with you before ministry. May they be restored to you fully before they even minister again. May you be their ministry. So we bless you, Lord. We thank you for Jennifer. Thank you for what, what, what you called to her. I bless her. Bless the work of her hands and all the people around her. Lord, continue to bring the hidden ones together, this last day remnant, this last day people that truly, truly shows that a mega church is the amount of presence, the amount of people. We bless you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So good. Uh, guys, if you are hungry to see souls saved, connect with Scott. He's got a great move, an authentic move of God. Is called 420 Fire. Is 420fire.org? Yes, ma'am. It's yes. 420fire.org. I still remember. And he's a real father in the faith. He equips, he's hands on. And if you're an intercessor, join with me at awakeningprayerhubs.com. So that's 420fire.org, awakeningprayerhubs.com. And we're going to see a lot more of us working together because it's, uh, it's time. And we so appreciate you watching. Please share this with somebody that needs to see it, share it with your friends. And look, look for the you know, comments so we know what you, what you need and we want to serve you. So bless you guys. We'll be back with you soon. Have a breakthrough day. Based on a startling encounter about a prophetic showdown coming to the body of Christ, where true and false prophets will be exposed, discerning prophetic witchcraft will equip you to be on the right side of the truth. This book exposes the supernatural divination deceiving spiritually hungry believers. Discern the signs of true and false prophets and prophecy. Avoid prophetic con artists. Escape charismatic witchcraft. Recognize witches and psychics posing as prophets and much more. Open your eyes to the divination trying to ambush your life with discerning prophetic witchcraft. Pick up your copy wherever books are sold.